stacks. So to use stacks and to use topaz, I've got to get this out of resolve in a format that's as close to the original as possible, deinterlace it, rescale it, and then bring it back in. Now I can't make DV files. If you go to the deliver page, you can make a whole bunch of still image types, MP4 files, for example, but under QuickTimes and AVI files, you haven't got that many codecs to play with. You want to do something that's fairly uncompressed and you want to do something that's interlaced. Otherwise, this will be doing the deinterlacing for you. So this is the way I found that works at the moment. If I find a better way, I'll let you know or if anything changes in a future version. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to make up a new timeline and I'm not going to use the project settings. So inside of Resolve, you can do different settings for different timelines. What I'm going to do is change the project settings to be 4x3 PAL. There is an enable interlace tick box here, but if I do that, it changes this thing to be 50 frames a second, and I end up exporting a 50 frames a second file. I don't want to do that. What I want to do is to export a 25 frames a second interlace file. So I'm not ticking that, and I'm just going create, and then I'm going to paste all my clips on it. Now these clips did have noise reduction and all sorts of stuff on them, so I need to get rid of all of that so they're the original clips. So again, making sure they're selected, right click, remove attributes, let's just tick everything, they're back to how they started. So now what I want to do is to make those into a bunch of individual files. So I'm going to go to deliver and here, obviously you've got a bunch of different presets, but I'm going to go to the custom one and I've got to set some settings in all of this lot. So it's divided up into three things. You've got video, audio, and then stuff about the file name. The first thing though is this. Do you make a single clip or individual clips? If you make a single clip, obviously it makes one movie if you want to do 99% of the time. If you do that, it'll save out the timeline as individual clips, one after the other. And that's what I want. I want each of these to be a separate clip so I can deinterlace them properly. So that's the first thing. Second thing, what kind of format are you going to make? Now I could make an MP4 file, but that would be heavily compressed. It's really got to be an AVI or it's got to be a QuickTime file. Now what I have been doing is making an AVI file and then choosing Grass Valley. This works for me all the time because I've got Grass Valley EDIUS so it can understand Grass Valley files on my system. You might need to download the Grass Valley codec to use this on a system that doesn't have EDIUS. The reason I'm choosing Grass Valley is I have this little tick box for interlaced rendering and that will save it out as an interlaced file. And that's what I want. I want it to be interlaced. Having chosen Grass Valley, I want to click on this and I'll probably change it to HQX. So it is changing it. It's converting it from DV to something else. Whereas the way I did it in EDIUS, it didn't convert it. Now, practically, you probably wouldn't see a difference. I like to not change anything if at all possible, but there is no option to resolve. I have to change it to something. So I'm going to choose it. Grass Valley HQX. I'm going to tick the interlace rendering and I'm also going to tick render at source resolution because I want everything to be rendered out basically exactly as it was in the first place and interlaced. Coming down here it's 4x3. I want to make sure I've got the aspect ratio right and there's lots of other stuff that you could fiddle with down here. This enable flat pass for example. If that's on then it ignores any effects on the clips which is kind of what I want to do. Now I've got rid of the effects myself because I didn't trust this. So you don't really have to fiddle with that if you've got rid of the effects, but that's what this thing does. But there's lots of other things down here, but the main thing I do is I come down to here and I put some handles on it. So when I did this in Edius, I put two seconds extra on either side. So I've got a bit of extra stuff to play with if I want to later. And I'm going to do the same here by putting in 50. So I now get two seconds on each side of these clips. So that set all of that stuff up. On the audio, it's basically linear PCM, that's fine. On the file name, now this is where you say I've set the file name and everything else. Where it's going to make it up to is set up here. That's where it's going, what's it going to be called? Now in this case, I like to get it to name it with the source name. You could just put a basic name in here and everything will be named with that and then something else at it, but I like to go for the source name. I also like to tick unique file names because if you don't tick that, what happens is it'll make that up. And if this clip is called the same thing, which it does, it'll make that up and then it'll do that one and that will overwrite that. And then this one and that will overwrite that. And you'll end up with one clip and you'll say, why didn't I get three clips? Because you didn't say unique file names. If you do that, it's got to stick something in there to make it unique. And you either put numbers at the start or the end. And I like to leave it at the start. The rest of it probably don't need eight digits in the file name, so I'll trim it down. 
And then the other stuff is pretty self-explanatory, like put it in a subfolder or put the other clips in separate folders and so on. But those are the main things I do. Individual clips, source file name, unique names, and on the video, Grass Valley interlaced render at source resolution. And then I will click and add that to the render queue. Now I've got this clips in here waiting to go, so let's just render it. So I'm going to right click on it and say open file location. And here we are, I've got those three clips. They're Grass Valley files, so you might find they don't play in your chosen media player. Now I can pop back into Stacks, right click, open, file batch, add, add folder, add them in, let it deinterlace it. Go to the place on the hard drive where those were stored, pop them into here, select all, adjust my settings. I think let's actually remember them from last time. Quick preview to make sure I'm happy with it. And then start those processing. And obviously it'll take time to chunder through that. Then what I've got to do is pump back on the timeline in Resolve and do Resolve-y stuff with them. So I'm going to get to that point and then I'm going to point out a couple of other things Resolve has got for cleaning up video in the paid for version, which are really nice and which I do use.